What's up guys? So today's video is actually a request. It is from CDP Performance 2613. Thanks for the comment. And of course, I'd love to show you how to use the uh, Sunin AG300 precision gauge. So whether I use it the right way, the wrong way, I don't know. That's just the way I figured out to use it. As with what's common with a lot of these machines and gauges and tools and things like that, there's really no clear instruction. So yes, I have the manual, but it doesn't make sense to me. It just doesn't work. So I've kind of come up with my own way, whether it's the right way or wrong way. It works for me, so am I wrong? Probably, but it works. So I've never really had a problem yet. And so I haven't posted the video yet of it but I did a tear down on a 455 that I did like for a guy last year it's for a boat motor and there's a reason why they call them the boat anchor they just fall apart for some reason I don't know why this I'm still figuring it out on why this one did it but the bearings just completely destroyed and yeah it oh here we go these bearings just gone done I'd never seen this but the bearing actually spun inside the other bearing so they kind of just got married two became one uh, so this one's actually this one's still fine this one's good but this one's shot so I can't find the numbers, so if you're watching this video, you're doing the same thing. Uh, there's my numbers. Crank pin, standard bearing, oil clearance, connecting rod. So that just kind of gets me close to where I need it to be. So there we go on that. When I measure my connecting rod, when I measure this one it's perfect right where it needs to be and let's see here there we go so i got it at 624 this one is it's stretched so this one i'm gonna have to shave quite a bit off of the caps to get it to work but yeah look at that this connecting rod actually stretched 15 thousandths of an inch i'd never seen it that bad that's pretty incredible so I'm going to have to mill those. They're probably done. I'll have to see what the specs are. But from here to here, across this way, it's fine. It's just it's stretched this way. I'll make sure that everything's straight so that the crank pin is right. But we'll get this gauge set up because that's what we're here for. So, yeah. CDP Performance asked for me to give a video on how this works how to set this up and we're gonna get that started so I'm all right I'm at set up at my table got my connecting rods so how this one works is you've got fingers here this one moves this gauge that one right there and so it's got some small points in it which they're little ball bearings that make it easy to ride on so that you get no friction as you get this measurement. So I've got, these are the part numbers here. So if you need to buy these, AG210, that's a point set. That's going to be, the point set is going to be doing these right here, the three on the very end, kind of little ball bearing. That's going to be good for three quarters of an inch to one and a half. And then AG2 uh, 620 is one and a half to 2.2. 630 is two to 2.6. AG340 is 2.6 to 3.4. So you can buy those point sets from Sunnin. You can put those part numbers in in their uh, online ordering catalog thing. And they'll show up. So you're going to need these. And so these 
we look at my, I'm gonna need a 2.625. So that's gonna put me right at the t extra large ones. The 340. So I'm gonna get those put in right now. I've actually changed my mind. The AG340 does not fit, so I'm going to be doing the AG360. It's, it was uh, too big and it wouldn't fit. Got a little slot. You just cinch it down a little bit, not tight. There we go. So we're all set up. So I got them all on. Make sure you put them so that they all line up with each other. And then this knob right here adjusts it out. So you can see that they're slowly moving apart. So this connecting rod is really in between sizes. So the other one was all the way in. The connecting rod wouldn't fit in when I installed them. I put this, these on, this is probably going to be all the way out. Just about, not quite. So then, this is a machine surface. Make sure that this is filed and straight. Take your file. Clean this up, make sure there's no burrs. This is a machine surface, so you can rest that up against it. And then you're gonna move the knob. And I'll bring the camera over in just a bit. It's hard to do it. I don't have enough hands. You're gonna set that up on that zero. This one is a little funny, but here it is. So I set this, and I've last time I did these connecting rods, I've, I've learned a few things, so they're not going to be perfect. But yeah, there we go. It's it's off by a couple ten thousandths. It's not perfectly round, but that's all there is to it. It's really easy to set this one up. And so now I can grind the caps here, and I'll put a link in the video if you want to watch it. I, uh, I have this grinder back here, but I hate it. It just doesn't work good. It's just unpredictable, doesn't do exactly what I want, too much setup, and it's old, wore out. So I put it in the milling machine, and I use a fly cutter. I use a fly cutter to take off some of the cap end, bring this closer, so then it's egg shaped like that, and then I hone it back to size. So, really easy thing to set up. So, you got the part numbers there. You can see what you need to get yours working correctly. If you bought it used, if it didn't come with everything. Um, I hope this video helped. And if you do end up finding these on eBay, or uh, when you look on eBay, they're like two or three grand for some reason. So if you find them sitting around, don't throw them away. They're worth a ton of money. And yeah, so my machine came complete with it. I had to do the research, find these part numbers for those sizes. I bought this little box and.
came kind of broken, but I got it off the summit just to keep things organized and neat. So, there you go. I hope that helped. Let me know if you have any other questions. Thanks for watching.